I'm glad to see you got wood. So it's a little bit of a crap shoot. So wait one sec, you're, you're an interior designer now? What the hell? That's not cool. <laughs> yes, what can we do here? Well, okay, so we're here to design a home theater, right? So I'm going to walk you through my vision of things that I'm thinking about for this space. Okay. All right, and then like usual, you can kibosh my ideas and tell me better ones. Okay, so we're in my basement. We got this reclaimed brick wall, which I love. I just want to keep it. Right. It's pretty cool. It, I really, the feel that I want to have in this room is kind of like you're in old Montreal. Okay, we, okay. Tried to, we tried to keep a little bit of a French feel throughout the house, but I want to take it a little bit further down here, almost kind of wine cellar-ish, you know, kind of like you're in an old Montreal restaurant or something like that. Okay. Maybe there's some reclaimed wood materials, barn board possibly. Okay. Right? But I don't want it to feel like a ranch. It's not a ranch. Right. right? There's not going to be any sort of horse theme in here at all. No horses? <laughs> no horses. Okay. And the wainscoting? Oh. What's your intent there? The wainscoting's got to go. So we rip that out of here. You know, I think... I want it to be a fairly, I guess transitional is the word, but with that old feel still. Okay. You know? So yep. I want can clean contemporary kind of lines. Right. But the materials can be old. Right? So, so it's kind of like that, it's kind of that restoration hardware feel, you know, where you yep. have like a really, you know, rich woods and antique sort of finishes, but combined mm -hmm. with the clean lines and, and uh, you know, nothing too shiny in the theater. Right. I want it to be very So simple. like the old and the new sort yeah. of mixed in together. Oh, exactly, right? So we can probably do something in the ceiling, sort of tie in um, with uh, the brick wall we have here. Yeah, what do you think you might want to put some wood up there or something? <laughs> well, <laughs> definitely don't want to keep the popcorn ceiling unless you want to. Oh, come on, you keep the I love the popcorn ceiling. It's, it's a it popcorn does, it theme, it's a character. theater, it's popcorn. It, it You're kinda, right, we should keep it. It kind of goes together, doesn't it? Maybe just put some yellow paint on it, like butter, you know? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> We should definitely have the seating here. Okay. Uh, definitely uh, do a six foot deep platform that mm -hmm. should accommodate your uh, back row of seating with incline motorization. Let's just see how far that comes. So six feet. Yeah, because six feet is going to give us enough room for the, the chairs. They're, they're incliners we're getting, so they can be close to the wall. Right. Right? And six feet takes us to here. So about here. Yeah. So I line up midway to the cabinet. Okay. But we might have to play with this dimension a bit, because we've got this sort of elbow in the wall here, and this angled section of the brick wall. So we're going to have, I guess, a challenge to figure out, when the, well, I guess when you're Got it going into the, your CAD and everything. Right, when I do the floor plan layout. Yeah, the floor plan. Basically, the seats, you know, they can they really only can they come to here, right? Because they'll just start well, to Well, and also forward. the incline, which we, we're going to need about six inches. Yeah. Unless we do a deeper stage so we can get the seating further off the wall. That'll actually right. sound better. If we get the seating further from the wall, it'll actually I almost want to take it further out as well. Okay. It's also going to help with the sound. The right, brick, the brick will be a, The brick will be a natural sort of acoustical property, too, like a diffusion, right? So right. it's going to... That's going to really help to break up the surround sound effects and, and, and help to just create a really enveloping sound back here, which is what, we're, what the goal is. Um, and then this, this area here, we've got, we really got to figure out how far that stage comes forward because um, we're going to end up with some awkward spot up by the entry door. Yeah, um, once I do the layout in CAD, uh, maybe we can look at, you know, incorporating some sort of built-ins over there that can be um, dual purpose for a concession, popcorn machine, um, candies, of what, or whatever else. Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, popcorn machines stink up the room pretty bad. I'm pretty well, sure you you're supposed to clean time. it. <laughs> 
So actually, I got a great deal on, on some used theater seating. <laughs> like, used? For real? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Pre-owned seating. And that's actually a good thing. It's, it's a good tip. People move, right? Right. When people move, sometimes they can sell off stuff. So you can get a great deal on, on theater seating. Just go to Kijiji and you know, why do you got Is that pay? how you got them? Well, no. <laughs> you have, have your inside, ways. a little inside connection. But basically, so we can do three back here. The way of the seating I've bought is uh, it's actually fortress seating, really nice quality stuff. And, oh, yeah. Uh, so it's a six inch arm, then a 24 inch chair, another 24 inch chair, six okay. inch arm, 24 inch chair, six inch arm. So it's basically it's a, an arm, love seat, and then a single arm, seat, right? right? So you got kind of, you know, what's that, four feet, six, seven, seven and a half feet. Which is basically what I got here on the ground. So it's I actually it's, it's pretty nice. It's gonna only really it's only gonna touch the wall about here, right? So it's only like eight inches off the wall, right? So basically we need a, a stage that's like six foot eight. So if, if the stage comes up to wherever it comes, then we've got four chairs to put in the front row. Are they um, all singles? Or are they single love seat singles? Single love seat single. Okay. Yeah. So that that's like ten feet there. So that's pretty much like. That'd be the whole four seats, right? It might be a little bit tight. It's pretty tight, like it's really... Even if the seats um, end where your foot is, basically at 10 feet, you're only basically left with about 18 inches of walk space. So you need about a, three feet. Might have to do three and three? Yeah, so probably um, two rows of three. So the screen's going to be on this wall. Yes. And I think I was measuring this earlier. It's, it's pretty much the maximum screen size we can do here is going to be a hundred inch diagonal, and um, sort of based on kind of two thoughts. I mean, where the front row of seats is, sort of three screen heights is kind of the rule of thumb, right? So a hundred inch diagonal screen is like forty eight inches high, like the actual viewing image. As a rule of thumb, I like to go with three screen heights to the sort of optimal, what I call the money seat, so whoever's paying the bill. Right? <laughs> Which is you, <laughs> in this case. Uh, so four feet for the screen height is going to get us to about 12 feet to the front row of seats. Um, but the other thing we got to consider, too, is the sight line, right? So you're going right. to do a sight line analysis. Yes, I to, will do that. We're going to consider the height of the stage, the height of that back row of seats, and make sure that we can see the bottom of the screen. The other thing is, are we keeping this bulkhead, or have you uh, sort of checked into to see whether or not there's any HVAC or plumbing or anything that's in there? Yeah, and do we need to isolate it? Unfortunately, there, there, is a, there is a bay window in the room above. Okay. And there's a, a vent. There's a vent. A vent okay. Room. And the buzzing lights, we're we keeping those too? Oh, you don't like the buzzing lights? <laughs> Damn, you're good. You heard that, eh? I think pot lights will be a nice choice because we can we can put them. We want to do some some column details, right? So we can position some some lights specifically to to wash the columns. We can also sort of create a section of pot lighting in the back of the room, which we can dim separately from the front of the room. So you know, if you want to have the front dark, which is important for watching a projector and screen, yes, you still have a little bit of dim light at the back. That would be okay. Um, we're gonna scrape all this popcorn off the ceiling. We'll, we'll get it smooth. Um, and we'll see how it looks when we scrape it. I mean, if, it, if, if once it's scraped, if it's uh, not salvageable, we'll just tear the drywall out and put some new drywall in. But I'm hoping we can salvage it because I really want to keep the cost down in terms of the, uh, the renovation in here. So keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> okay. That's, I don't know. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> because this is an exterior wall, uh, I don't want to be doing in-wall speakers in this wall down here. Um, so. This, we're going to go with a fixed screen, it'll just be in place, and then the, the, the front speakers, they'll be definitive technology speakers we're using, Okay. The, the Mythos line, and they've got a flat panel sort of styled speaker which is like an inch and a half deep. That's impressive. Yeah, no, it's really thin, and they sound great, so basically we're going to use those and um, incorporate them into the front wall. Let's just stick to a five channel system, and uh, we'll just do two subs, I think that'll be nice. Let's do two subwoofers okay. so we can keep it symmetrical. And um, I, I don't want to put the subwoofers in the wall. Because it just drives the cost way up. Right. You don't get as much performance. And this room's pretty good because it, you know, generally rooms that are more evenly divisible dimensions are problematic. And this particular room is good because the, the front wall and the length and the ceiling heights, none of them divide into each other evenly. No, definitely not. And we've got not. some different shapes going on, some triangles, we've got some bulkheads popping down. So acoustically, we should be pretty good. Um, I think what we'll do, though, in terms of, you know, once we get past this sort of absorptive area with the acoustical treatment, 
is we'll just, to keep the cost down again, we'll just order more of the fabric that we've got going on for these absorptive panels up front. Yep. And we'll just wrap some MDF panels back here. Okay. It'll look exactly the same. Right. And that'll give us something that's a little bit reflective, but still a tiny bit absorptive because of the fabric. So better, right. better than drywall. I was trying to cut the budget over here. <laughs> you always try to do that. Yes, <laughs> I know. Well, is there anything else uh, in this room that I need to know about in terms of uh, design elements? Uh, well, projector. We've got to figure, talk about the projector. And with the Epson projector that we're using, we've got a huge range of acceptable distance. So okay. I think we can put it right back in this area, nice and tight to the wall. And then for the equipment, um, we're going to put the equipment in the utility room, which is directly behind here. The opposite wall. Yeah, we'll put a little rack in there. Okay. And then uh, we're going to use a control for um, remote control, which is, um, it's actually Wi-Fi. Um, so don't have to point it, don't have to see the equipment. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty slick. I did years and years ago. What do you think about that? Oh wow, it's quite nice actually. Yeah, you like it? I do. Oh, wow, look at all the colors. What are you doing? You're taking it off the it's wall quite or... nice. What? All right. all right. All right. <laughs>